Hi there, everybody. This is Colin with Blocksmith XR again, and today we'll be taking on the next challenge in our challenge day series, and this will be our uh, tiger habitat challenge. So some of you may uh, have gotten into tigers because of, you know, some TV shows recently. So we thought that a fun challenge would be to recreate a tiger habitat, kind of like a um, zoo or maybe even, you know, outdoor area for some tigers in the Blocksmith XR Builder, create that virtually. Um, but also, you know, bring awareness um, to, you know, the plights that tigers face and also showcase some of the educational aspects of the, the builder. So we'll be doing a, a few kind of uh, multiple choice challenges uh, within our tiger, tiger habitat uh, exhibit area. So follow along and we'll, uh, we'll get started and show you how you can create your own tiger habitat if you want to take on these challenges or if you just want to watch and uh, just kind of learn some cool facts about tigers along the way, that's totally fine too. So um, let's get started. And I'd say the first thing that we can get going with today is actually building that um, kind of zoo habitat area. So in this, uh, this stream, kind of unlike some of the other streams that I've done, this will be um, not purely indoor or purely outdoor. This will be a combination of being set um, outside, you know, where the habitat will be, and then also partially indoors where my zoo area and the viewing area uh, will be, where you can actually walk up and, you know, look into the tiger habitat and, uh, you know, answer those questions. <clears throat> so uh, I'll probably still start with, you know, building the exterior just so I have something to uh, get me grounded. Um, but after that, I'll build that interior portion and we can take a look at how you can combine those two, especially with things like lighting and some of the shapes that will work well with uh, creating that effect. Um, so yeah, like, like I said, let's get started. Um, first thing I'm going to do is remove the grid, you know, for these kind of more uh, natural landscapes. I like working with, you know, some, some hills, you know, some kind of wavy ground so I don't have as much, uh, you know, so it's not just this flat plane going off into the distance forever. So I'm going to add in just some hills to be my starting area. And I want these to be a little flat except for some, some uh, in the distance. So I'll make sure those are still kind of small. And I'll apply a material onto it now. So that, that looks pretty good for now. Um, if you haven't seen before, we have a whole library of materials that you can choose from. Uh, this just showcases all of them, but we also have some categories. So I know that in terrain, I will find some you know good materials for uh, you know a ground floor. I want kind of like a leafy, um, jungly ground floor going on. So um, here we go. Here's a leaf litter material, and if I open up my material options. Those leaves are very large right now, which, you know, in the jungle, sometimes there, there are very big leaves, um, but I want that to be a little bit smaller. There we go, just so I can kind of easily see what's going on. And I'll duplicate that, increase the height a little bit so I have some variation in my scene, and stretch those out just a little bit more. All right, um, I'm going to duplicate these both so I can continue my kind of tag tiger habitat exhibit along the way. And in this case, I'm going to uh, see if I can, you know, showcase the multiple uh, habitats or places that tigers can live. So, you know, one will be kind of set in a jungle area. Another I'll try and make into more like a savanna, kind of like open ground um, place. And I think my, my grass with flowers can do that pretty well. You know, I might have a few things for the tigers to play on over here. Uh, and then finally, I'll see if I can end it with a little uh, kind of, I think, just pond area for tigers to swim because, uh, if you didn't know, tigers are one of the few feline species that actually enjoys, really does enjoy, um, swimming in water. So I'll put a little uh, pond or lake area at this end of my tiger exhibit for them to go swim in, uh, if they so wish. And we have some, you know, good mud or dirt materials. I think I'll stick with the mud because uh, cause I want it to look pretty wet. You know, I want it to look like there's water around and I want that because I'm about to drop some water in here. So I'm going to use a cube and apply a water material. This one's easy to find or yeah, I usually just search for water cause, um, that's the fastest way to do it in my opinion, but you can always just look, you know, through our, our list there. I think, yeah, it's under the terrain tab. Oh, looks like on this side my hill isn't going quite far enough. 
And it looks very, very muddy right now, so I might, you know, use some of these uh, these options to kind of change things up a little bit. So I want that to be a little bit less reflective, you know, not be a mud pit, but just kind of like this area that uh, that's a little muddy. And then for these, since I just don't want that gap there, actually, you know what, I'll solve that, solve that uh, later on. Right now, I'll see if I can start making my actual zoo exhibit area. So this this large kind of piece of ground here, that'll be where I, you know, eventually add in, um, you know, trees and brush and, you know, places for the tigers to sit or, or lay around. Um, but this kind of angle over here on the left and back, I'll see if I can have that actually be the, uh, the exhibit, um, you know, zoo portion where my, uh, my people can kind of walk in and take a look at this tiger habitat. So, um, and I might leave this open. I'm not going to put a boundary on this quite yet because I have an idea, something fun to do there, but uh, I'll try that out later on. <clears throat> All right, so I kind of want to try and go for um, a mix between, you know, uh, I don't want to just put like a railing, you know, in my scene and just have people hang over that. I want to go for, you know, kind of these more complex setups where you're kind of looking through the entrance of a cave at this, you know, habitat. So it's kind of going to be like you're in a cave, but there's, you know, still going to be that glass separating you from um from this tiger habitat and you know and where you uh the the viewers walk around so first thing i'm going to do is add in that cave because that's what i'm going to use to build that that little viewing platform and if you haven't seen this before um, the blocksmith xr builder comes with just a ton of pre-made objects with trees you know cliffs uh cave entrances rocks we even have a volcano down here somewhere so you can you know really quickly make those really beautiful scenes using these objects just by dragging them out and then placing them in your scene. So like I said, I'm gonna see if I can do this, there we go, on exactly 90 degrees. See if I can do this and uh, have my cave entrance here kind of be the, like I said, the viewing platform for this, um, for this tiger habitat area. And since that's, uh, you know what, that, that actually looks good right there. Um, I'll move my player back just a little bit. And now I'll cover this with, you know, some glass and kind of make it just look more like an actual exhibit viewing platform. All right, so this will be my glass separator. And since I don't want it to be yellow glass, I'll search for glass. Oh, I'm still under train there. And I want it just to have a slight blue tinge, you know, so you can tell that it's, you know, a pane of glass there and just make sure that goes all the way across. Looks good. Oh, looks like I'm getting a little bit of a overlap on this side. So I might just, uh, let's see, how can I do that? I'll probably just put something there to block that, you know, just another rock or something. All right, um, so I have my little viewing area, but I'll try and make this look just a little bit more realistic. You know, I'll put a couple of support beams in there for my glass. And from there, I'll keep building the uh, rest of this, this viewing area uh, for my, my tiger exhibit. And I'll use a me you know, metallic material up there. And I think, you know, just kind of like a, not really industrial look, but just something, you know, where it's kind of clearly, um, you know, metal and part of the zoo. Let's increase reflections on that a little bit. Um, okay, I think that looks pretty good for now. I'll, yeah, just throw a quick, uh, thing right there just to cover that piece of glass. If you ever see a mistake or, you know, make a mistake when you're editing something, you can always cover it up. And there we go. Looks like that's just part of that cave wall. Actually, speaking of which, I could increase the zoom levels on those two to make it look a little bit more realistic. All right, and now I'll just surround my player with the uh, kind of viewing area, and I'll make this just a standard kind of concrete uh, platform. You know, the tigers, they'll, they'll get the, the nice area with all the detail. My, uh, my humans, <laughs> they'll have to deal with not so nice uh, setup. You know, I'm just giving them concrete and uh, maybe a, a wood ceiling if they're lucky. Uh, you know, spending the time on giving the, the tigers the, the cool looking setup. So 
let's just toss a concrete. There we go. Material on there. And all, I will also spend just a little bit of time, see if I can, you know, pretty much create what's what, uh, called a prefab out of this, where I can just, you know, create one um, hallway here, basically, and then reuse that uh, same hallway, you know, possibly multiple times in my in my scene here. All right. So obviously, don't want to block off my window, so I'll just get that kind of positioned. I may not even need a concrete pillar here, but for consistency's sake, I'll keep it. There we go. Kind of have that little nook. And uh, yeah, I'll do the same thing right over here. So I can have that wall, oops, wrong rotation handle. Have that wall just kind of extend the same direction. And I'll, I'll actually put something on this, uh, on this wall here anyway and just kind of move that pillar in so it kind of looks like the concrete's been poured you know around that uh, concrete wall and just make sure my sizes are still pretty good yeah i think that looks pretty good all right uh so i'll stretch these out to kind of just wrap around this corner here but then all i can just duplicate this uh, in fact, I don't even need that one. And just rotate and use the exact same, you know, pieces that I had for my uh, for my portion down here for that hallway, and just use it for this hallway as well. That way, it looks, you know, similar all the way throughout. And if my concrete is looking a little stretched here, then I can always just change some of my zoom options. All right, cool. That's looking good so far. Uh, let me just. See if I can get this wall to close up. And I'll just put that there for now. I won't stretch it out because, unlike these two, because I'll want to add a few more, uh, few more viewing ports where that, that, uh, that guy is. Oops, don't want a hole in my actual ground. And then I'll just toss, you know what? This is actually a trick that I learned a while ago but it's very handy when you're doing interior editing. You know, the, the kind of impulse now would be to put a roof on this because, you know, I have my building made um, and, you know, to finish it off, I would put a roof on there. However, as you can imagine, you know, trying to actually edit things inside of my scene, you know, trying to, you know, put that quiz portion in there or, you know, make it look a little bit more like a zoo with an entrance and exit, um, you know, that <clears throat> will be very difficult if I have this roof that's blocking my view. So I'll, I'll uh, apply that wood material like I talked about, but afterwards I'll, um, let's see, I think that would work better. There we go. Afterwards I'll just leave it kind of hanging off the edge there so I can still easily edit uh, the interior of my scene here, this area. And of course I'll do the exact, exact same thing right over here. So just duplicate. And then I'll use this piece for this ceiling. So just leave those hanging off for now. Okay, uh, so I have my first viewing portal made. And just to test that out, make sure it looks cool, you know, from the inside, um, I'll play the viewer. And if you this is the first time you're seeing this, it's basically that means that I'm gonna enter the player, where are they? My player figure. Um, just kind of enter their shoes, so enter their perspective, and that gives me the uh, option to walk around. So I'm going to play my viewer. I don't need to see that again because I'm recording already. Um, that is a very sweet option, though. You can easily record anything in the builder just by pressing the R key while the viewer is playing. Um, but yeah, this this interior si um, scene looks good. I have enough room, you know, to add in trees and everything for my tiger habitat, and then I have you know plenty of space to. Uh, to create, you know, some different uh, exhibits that talk about the, um, you know, some of the things affecting tigers and learning about tiger facts. So one thing I am noticing really quick, and you may see this in your blocksmith scenes too, and this is very important. When you see this kind of flickering going on, that's a, an effect called Z fighting, or basically when two um, two surfaces are exactly overlapping, um, and basically the software can't tell what to show. Show, so it tries to show both. And the easy way to fix that 
is, um, well, it's basically just make it so they don't totally overlap anymore. So you can either just scale one, you know, one way and just make sure they don't actually touch. Or, you know, this is the trick that I like. You just scale one down just a tiny little bit. So, you know, there's this, this tiny little step right here. Um, but that basically means that Z fighting will problem go, uh, problem will go away since they're not perfectly overlapping anymore. And uh, while I'm at it, I'll just uh, fix my concrete slabs here to be a little bit more uh, unique. Okay, now that I have my uh, kind of viewing exhibits ready, I'll group them together. And I can do that by selecting multiple objects. So I just clicked and dragged. And looks like I maybe got too many objects. Let's see what else is selected there. Um, I think it's my floor. Yep, there it is. Uh, so now I can actually group this viewing area together. And with it grouped, I can just easily duplicate that. And now when I drag it around, since it's a group, it will rotate and uh, just kind of move all in one. So I basically just glued that whole piece together. And that, that um, is why I left my wall pretty thin, or, or excuse me, pretty short, because I can now put a couple more viewing portals in there. And I'll have that be the end of my tiger exhibit. So yeah, just really quick, if you're like me, you'll want some kind of entrance and exit or else, you know, when you're in there, you're like, ah, how do I get out? Where is the rest of the world? Am I just trapped in this tiger exhibit that has no entrance or exit? So very simple solution for that. Just give the appearance of, appearance of an entrance. Uh, I'll probably do it on this. Actually, that doesn't really matter. Uh, I'll do it on this wall. And I'll just use a black, that's pretty big. This is a tiger exhibit and they're usually very popular. Um, yeah, that looks good for an entranceway. Let's put my player near it just to get a rough approximation. Okay, that looks pretty good, yeah. And now since I don't wanna build a whole doorway around it, I'll just toss in, uh, where are you? Here we go, square frame and create that uh, doorway entrance and exit really quick. Okay. And I'll use a wood material for that as well. Oh, that grabbed uh, aluminum. Bamboo doesn't look bad, actually. Um, yeah, neither does that one. Hmm. You know, I'll leave it on that. Uh, a kind of bamboo, vertical bamboo tiling. And just to give myself an exit as well, I'll group, pressing G and group that, duplicate, and then move it to the other side of my experience. So I have a little exit as well. And I'll just, uh, just to make that clear for people, you know, I'll just toss a little sign up there. And this is gonna be one of the things that I'll be focusing on today. You know, we've looked at the variable, um, we've looked at, you know, some of these other special objects like a spawner, but I haven't done a ton with text objects. And they can really do a lot for uh, for games, you know, and scenes by just adding, you know, some detail or explanation um, when you need it. So I'll have this say exit, have the font be pretty big, have it be on a, well, let's see, I'll change the background. Uh, there we go. So I just wanted on a simple little box, the font color say exit, or excuse me, font, have <laughs> the text say exit and have the font color be red. That's what I was trying to say. And, oh, looks like I, yeah, that was a good, good catch there. All right, cool. And I'll just, uh, have that same, just use that same exit sign and just use that right over here as well. Okay, so now um, I'll add a little bit more detail to my actual tiger habitat area. 
you know, add in some trees and possibly see if I can actually get a tiger, you know, in there. We'll see what that looks like. But like I said, I really want to focus on, um, you know, using those text boxes today and some images to create that tiger awareness um, slash educational experience. So as you tour the tiger habitat, it's not just, you know, touring just a regular zoo. You're, you know, having to kind of take a little quiz or, or um, you know, learn some facts along the way as well. So I'll, uh, as kind of a background reference, I'll add in an image object and that's under the special tab and I'll put that image right on my wall and I downloaded an image uh, before this and this has uh, several facts um, quite a few facts actually dozens um, about tigers and I'll just put that on my wall for my tiger it's an exhibit for my player to kind of look at and I'll put a little um, border around that too so just use my snap points. Just want to make make it look like it's you know this kind of framed uh, tiger tiger info uh, you know info poster or something like that, rather than just you know something hanging off the wall like my image is right now. Okay, snap that into place, and now just create a little. Oops, I'm just gonna undo that. That undo tool right at the top, very, very handy if you ever make, ever just make a very tiny uh, mistake, because like it suggests, you can just undo it right away, rather than having to, you know, load a save or, or something like that, um, or trying to manually undo it. So remember that uh, that tool if you ever need it. I need to undo something. I'll shrink this down just a little bit. Okay. Cool. So I'm going to explore my scene again really quick and just make sure that my tiger poster looks good, my entries and exits look good, and my duplicated uh, viewing areas also look good. So I'll play the viewer and let's check it out again. Nice. Cool. Yeah, this will appear much better once I actually have that, that exhibit. All right, here's my poster. This has quite a few different facts on there. And I'll, uh, I'll include some of those facts in the uh, the present or er, in the quiz that I build later on. All right. Doing platform two looks good, and so does the third one. Perfect. All right, now I can actually add, um, start adding some detail to my to my scene here, um, to my actual tiger habitat. You know, that's kind of what I think is of as the fun part. Um, but I did notice just from this viewing platform that I can see basically under these two, uh, under these two planes here or these hills, since I have that little gap. So to fix that small issue, I'll just use some quick rocks, and the rocks will also give me the ability to, uh, you know, um, kind of stretch this out a little bit. And actually, you know what? I will stretch that out a ways. Okay. Cool. And now I, you know, I'll be able to uh, just have a little bit more space for my tigers. I don't want them feeling confined. You know, this is a virtual project, so might as well give them the space if you have the space. There we go. So I'll just make sure those gaps are are just kind of covered, and that should result in a much better looking scene. Okay. Um. So now. Oh, that, that could actually work pretty well. I just, my eye caught uh, on, there it is, my stone arch object. And I'll use that little stone arch as well as some of these stones just to kind of um, separate my, my various habitats. So, you know, my savanna type area will be, you know, separated from my jungle area with this same kind of rocky outcropping. Oops. and just scale those up to create those those barriers. Okay, and I'll just duplicate those and spin them around. Uh, looks like one of my, hmm. I think on this one, I might just do a smaller rock into the ground. There we go. Uh, yeah, that looks like a decent transition there. Okay. 
Now I'm going to uh, actually add my detail in here, you know, have, build some tiger toys, um, you know, some, some things for them to climb on, and then see if I can build that kind of jungle habitat on this side. So I'll do that, try, try and do that at least very quickly. So just kind of duplicating objects very often, you know, duplicating and rotating are your friend to, you know, create that kind of variation in a scene very quickly. And once you get a few in there, you know, that are pretty different looking from one another, that's when you can just uh, kind of mass duplicate uh, quite a few of them. So you don't have to, you know, do this for, for all of them, you know, where you're changing their size and rotation and everything. You can just kind of grab a few, duplicate, you know, a few of those, you know, turn them around so they aren't totally overlapping. Um, I'll shrink those down as well so I get some different heights. And you also have to remember how this is going to look from inside, you know, because I'm doing that interior zoo um, area and then I'm also doing the exterior or the outside habitat area. So, um, yeah, I want to make sure that it looks good from, from all of those perspectives. So, you know, for example, what, what I mean by that is, you know, if I was walking through this area, all of a sudden I have my tree growing through my window, which is obviously, obviously a little strange looking. So I'll just move that back a little ways and uh, make sure you don't have any floating trees because that will always throw people off. So just keep an eye out for, you know, any of those trees that uh, are floating above ground. Okay. So I got my trees in my jungle area. I think I might be able to use a couple different trees for the jungle um, jungle area as well. You know, they aren't just made of palm trees. <clears throat> um, toss a couple of these pine trees in there. And one more. Um, you know, actually, you know, I'll do an oak over here. You know, I have a kind of a fun idea of what to do with that. Make that be pretty big and good. I have an open branch there. Okay. Um, so yeah, instead of trying to you know extend my habitats out that way, which I could do, I will kind of block this area off now using just a series of hills and kind of like more jagged looking mountains. So I'll try and make this you know pretty clear that that this area is inaccessible just by having you know that, that final mountain off in the distance, which I'll make a little bit darker. And you know that doesn't have to be that tall. It's not like there's an actual mountain range hanging out right there. Okay. Because yeah, the other thing is I don't have to worry about my players actually climbing on this because you know the intention is to never let them outside of here. So I can just uh, use some cliffs and you know mountains instead and that'll hopefully get that same get that same kind of feeling. All right. Just working on enclosing this in. Just making sure once again that everything looks good from inside because this is where my players will be. All right. And I'll duplicate. Looks like I need one more cliff on this side as well just to make sure it's totally kind of uh, kind of covered there. All right, so that's the kind of boundaries of my tiger habitat area here. And now I'll uh, see if I can just add a few kind of like smaller detail objects, you know, things that um, you might find in a jungle or, you know, I call that a savanna. It's more just like an open grassy area. Um, but you know, just some, some kind of fun features for the tigers to possibly play with or you know, run around or um, you know, possibly even like hunt some, some of their prey. So I'll um, see if I can actually build a piece of bamboo really quick because bamboo is one of the major plants that you can usually find in tiger habitats. And I'll, I think we do actually have some bamboo wood that might look a little interesting here I want kind of like a greenish yellow you know that kind of like 
uh, like it's like kind of growing, but kind of old bamboo as well. I'll, yeah, I'll use those two for my bamboo. And then, you know, just see if we can get some different heights for it. Obviously different angles, you know, for this bamboo to grow. And then once I have, you know, several, oops, several different, you know, kind of, you know, angles and uh, pieces of bamboo that look, you know, very uh, kind of unique. That's when you can just group and duplicate the group of them. All right, so almost done. Just gonna duplicate that once or twice just to get that kind of offset feeling. And I'll anchor these as well, so I'm not accidentally moving that. All right, cool, perfect. Now I can put my, and I'll name this, bamboo group into my uh, jungle area. Maybe rotate those around a little bit as well. Okay. Any floating trees, floating trees, floating bamboo trees? No, looks good. Okay, so to create just a little bit of like, uh, one, once again, that, that feeling that this is set, you know, in a jungle, or at least this is a jungle habitat, I wanna just kind of give it, you know, that kind of like humid um, jungle feeling. Um, and I'll do that with some fog, you know, just kind of like it's very moist. You know, I could even actually <laughs> see this is something you can do using the Blocksmith XR Builder that you just can't do with an actual zoo, which is I could put different microclimates in each of my little areas. So I can have it rain, you know, with some like mist in my, my jungle. I can have it be very sunny in my savanna area. And then, um, I don't know, I'll, I'll decide what to do over here. I have an idea, but I'm kind of curious if I can get away with it. So. Um, yeah, let's see if I can do that. I'll create those little microclimates. And let's see, I will need a little rain effect. And as you can see, you can kind of tell, you know, the rain is, uh, you know, affecting pretty much this area right in here, which is pretty much what I want, but just a little bit smaller. So I'm going to shrink that down and just make sure that it's only raining. You know, I obviously don't want to be raining inside and I only want it raining in that uh, kind of jungly area. That looks pretty good. Okay, and then just a couple more uh, pieces to kind of create that, that jungle effect are, um, where did I see? Ah, yes, some fog. I think some fog could, uh, could help really well with creating that, that feeling of it being just kind of like misty and, and jungly. Excellent. All right, so let's take a look what our uh, what our habitats look like now from the indoors. I've added some of those details. Perfect. So that I think that looks very jungle-like, and I'm ready to see some cool tigers and take some quizzes about tiger facts. All right, just like that, and check out my jungle from this side. Looks good. Savannah, and then my final area, the swimming area. All right, so with my, uh, well, I have my jungle habitat designed. I'll just spend a little bit more time on my other habitats just to get them into place. Like I said, I want my, uh, I want my savanna grassy area to just be bright and sunny. So I'll use this sun shaft effect, just kind of create that feeling that it's, you know, kind of bright and sunny out here. And I could even do that using a couple of lights as well. So the point light will illuminate just kind of like a whole area, kind of like a light bulb. Um, so I'll use that one just to make sure this, my savanna area just appears a little bit more kind of like sunny and bright. You know, this will be, if I was one of the, the tigers, that would be the area I'd want to like sun myself and, and hang out. So. Um, that might be a little too bright. I'm going to lower the intensity on those just a little bit. If you are designing for mobile or for, you know, um, 
the Oculus Go or Oculus Quest, you want to keep your eye on this setting here, enabled for mobile, because that means that you can actually have those lights turn on. You know, normally these, these lights wouldn't work on uh, mobile devices, but you can actually kind of force your device to use those lights by uh, checking that box right there. Um, word of warning though, you know, if you are going to be uh, trying to see this on a, a Quest or a Go or a um, cardboard uh, VR headset, then those those lights can slow down your scene quite a bit. So if you know that a scene has those lights in it, um, you know, you might want to be a little careful. All right, uh, so final scene I'm actually going to do is uh, I'm going to change my mind from like a uh, kind of like muddy area into a snowy area. We got to get, you know, represent those Siberian tigers too. So I'll have this be kind of like a nice snowy area. Um, my water is a little too small, so I'm going to move that cliff back just a little bit. I want that water to go in there. Okay, that looks a little bit better. And just like with my, my other habitats, I'll have this one have its little own microclimate as well with some snow effects. There we go. That one's a, just a nice peaceful effect anyway, so I like that. Might add, and just like with the others, you can kind of get a sense of where they are. Um, yeah, so it's about this area. So I'll move that back a little bit and then add one more piece of snow right near the window. So if you're looking through the window, that should be very obvious. Cool. All right, um, looks very good so far. Missing just a couple of details, you know. Um, I'll put a little, perhaps a little log out here for the tire to, or excuse me, for the, <laughs> the tiger to explore. And I was going to say, I was gonna try and put a tire in this tree, you know, as a little thing for the tiger to, to bat or bat or attack or something like that. But uh, I'm not sure if I wanna take that kind of detail level on this. So I'll just do a little, little uh, kind of tree that it can walk along or, you know, wooden, uh, wooden area. Or maybe, yeah, no, I was gonna try and see if I could turn that into a little shelter or something. But I think that looks, I'll just toss that in that corner actually. I was gonna try and take that detail to a, another level. You know, having this be kind of like a play area for the tigers, have some toys. But I'll probably uh, probably just call it good with, with that right there. And instead focus my intention on what I mentioned earlier, which is creating that little uh, quiz that you have to go through, you know, if you wanna view each of these, these little exhibits. So, first thing I will do is, so my cheat sheet or kind of answers are gonna be this thing right here for my users or for the people who play this. And I'll probably use a couple of these facts off the sideboard right here. You know, tigers consume over 90 pounds of meat. Um, tigers are strong swimmers. I think that would be a great one for this. Um, okay, yeah. So what I'll do here, just so my player can't run through and skip all of these, and I'll move my player to my actual entranceway like they just stepped in, is have these little like turnstile type things, or you know, just little things you can um, you have to go through in order to see a specific area. So I'm just gonna do a low wall, and I'll use, let's see, I'll use that same concrete. I'll use a slightly different concrete. And like I said, just have that low wall. I'll put that yeah, right there. Make it kind of seem intentional there. So my player actually has to go through that and that's what will trigger those, those questions. And the first one, I think the first question might just be, you know, they can, they can kind of take a look at this later if they want, but the first one will just be kind of like general tiger knowledge. So how much do you actually know about this? And these will be my gates. And I'll just have those kind of swing open as I reach them. Because I also wanted to let you know about something that's coming up with our new version of the builder that's coming up. All right, 
So the classic way to create basically a swinging or like a hinged animation is to use snap points. And I just uh, whoa, almost <laughs> lost it there. Uh, use snap points um, going back. And uh, you can just snap things in place. And then that'll allow you to you know rotate things around. But that approach, we always found a little, um, you know, it didn't work super well. So there we go. All right, that's what I was talking about. Um, so we have created in our version that's about to be released, and I wanted to show it to you today. Um, I'll have to wait till the next stream to show that off. Basically a hinge object that allows you to kind of choose a point where you want a hinge to be, and then um, you know choose an object that will be attached to that hinge, and that way you can just uh, create a hinge just like that, you know, simple kind of button click rather than trying to, you know, snap something together and then keep to that hinge point snapped. And that, you know, that approach we always just found a little, um, little strange or maybe not strange, but just uh, not super easy to use. So I'll do my gates right here instead. Okay. Um, but I do want to animate these. Let's see, and that one needs to be. So like I said, yeah, you won't have to use that approach with snapping to create uh, hinged animations anymore. And okay, I'll have that take, yeah, let's go about eight seconds, no loop. And I'll have it uh, easing and ease out. So 0.8, same settings, ease in and ease out. And basically, uh, when my player gets close to my gate, I'll detect them with the trigger. That'll have my gate open. And uh, once they, my gate is opened and my player has moved through, that's when I can actually show, um, let's say the questions right around here. So I'll just say with this gate, or excuse me, with the trigger to um, start the gate, when this area is entered by the player, then I want the gate objects to play their animations. That warning message was just telling me, I'll see it again in just a second. Um, oh, or maybe not. Uh, it was basically just telling me that that animation is now playing at a trigger. So it's waiting to play instead of just playing at start. All right, so let's test that setup now. You know, I'm definitely a proponent of testing early and often. So let's walk into my trigger. And, oh, well, they moved a little fast, but uh, my, my animation definitely played. So um, just to make sure that I can't re, you know, keep that thing opening and closing, I'll have the trigger deactivate. So we'll just play that animation just that one time, and that's all that's possible. I'll increase that to about 1.5 seconds. The reason why I'm spending kind of so much time on the setup here is because um, over the next ones, I'll have the next uh, couple areas, I'll just reuse this same setup, you know, just like I did with my walls here. I was just able to copy and paste them and then reuse those for um, later on. Yeah, I'll do the same thing with this tiger poster actually. And I'll, oops, there we go. I'll see if I can uh, put this poster a few different places, so group it, put it in a few different places in my exhibit. So they, they don't have to run back to it if they need a little bit of help. That might fit. Yes, perfect fit. Almost like that was intentional. <laughs> yeah, let's call it good. Okay, so I'm getting, uh, getting close to my actual quiz portion. Actually, you know what? Let's just start that now. Um, so that sounds like it might be a little difficult but creating a quiz is actually super easy. All you need is four text boxes, or, or even fewer if you want um, fewer like multiple choice answers. And I'd say, let's see, the, the first um, quiz question, I don't want to grab from my poster here. I just kind of want it to be general knowledge. So I'm going to say how many tigers are currently living in the wild and I'll put a back around that so it appears nice and clean. I want a canvas in this case and I'm going to round the corners on my canvas a little bit, put a small border, increase my font size a little bit just so it's you know readable. 
have that, you know, border around and choose. I like just, you know, having some kind of different fonts. That one's, you know, definitely more readable. That one's maybe too cartoony. Uh, that one's a little too formal. I'm gonna go back to that one because I just kind of like the the bold, you know, text that's easily uh, visible. All right, so I have my first question in here. Now I need a few answers. And my answers will be, you know, probably just like one word answers or one number answers. Um, and I'll say, uh, you know, these will be my different options. So let's say around 500. My next one will be, um, you know, I don't want this to be too obvious, um, but the, let's say around, yeah, 400, because I know what the right answer is. Around 4,000. And then my final question will be around, let's just toss another zero. So 4,000. And then 40,000. And I'll just make sure these are all lined up. This tool, if you've never used it, what I'm doing is I'm holding the Z key. And when I do that, I have my blue line appears. That means I can only move this along the Z axis. And if I hold my X key, which is the one I wanted there, I can now only move it on the X axis. Super handy tool if you've ever needed to align stuff on one axis really quickly. Okay, and obviously now I need some kind of correct answer. You know, my players can just look at my answers, but I do want them to interact with them as well. So uh, what I'll do for that is just add a simple interaction event and I'll have the text box, if they click on this answer, which, uh, spoilers, is not correct. Fortunately, there are more than 400 tigers living in the wild. Um, but I can basically say this is wrong by just changing its color to a nice red color, um, which apparently it means wrong, but um, yeah, let's have that. Uh, I'll do a slightly kind of like darker red and I'll just leave, you know, that'll be my, my kind of like wrong answer. And also, once again, spoiler alert, it's much fewer than uh, 40,000. 4,000 is approximately the right number. It's believed that it's actually about 3,900 that are currently living in the wild. Um, that's across the whole world. So that's one of the, you know, once again, one of the reasons why, uh, you know, we wanted to bring attention to this um, just because, you know, that, that is an important um, thing to be aware of that they are endangered species. Um, but I do want my right answer to, to be very visible and clear that it's, oops, clear that it's correct. So I'm gonna have that turn green, but also I'll give it another um, kind of small uh, change there. All right. So I'll just group those. So yeah, I had it turn green. Oh, not quite yet. I also wanted it to set itself and have it glow. So it will, yeah, turn, turn bright. Bright color there. Okay, so right now I have my first answer made. And uh, let's see really quick. Set that to another color. Okay. Yep, that looks good. So let's test that out really quick. All right, so entry looks good. How many tigers? Wrong. Correct. Wrong. All right, so my first quiz question is good. Now I'll need to, um, I don't want these appearing, you know, from the very beginning or else my player might be able to, you know, see them. So I'll have them appear kind of out of the ground. And to do that, I'll just create a quick animation. Um, there we go. And have that pop out of the ground. There we go. 
and the same thing that triggers my uh, triggers those doors I'm opening will also trigger that animation to play. So play animation and uh, I do still want to deactivate it. All right, but now that I have these core objects made, I can see if I can just kind of select all of them. All right, looks like I have almost everything except for my quiz. And now I can just duplicate those several times throughout my exhibit. There we go. Kind of place that, yeah, right about there. Don't want my wall going into my exhibit or my questions either, so uh, it, it's barely going in there. Okay, and then just grab those questions and pull them out a little ways. All right, um, so now I can just uh, kind of take a look at my quiz questions and remember, well, okay, let's go back to my poster. Woo. All right, so here's a fun one. A group of tigers is called a streak. That is something I did not know. What is a group of tigers called? And this, since I don't want my answer always to be the center one, I'll um, edit this group. And in here, edit group, if you haven't used that before, it's super helpful because it means you can just kind of shift things around without um, actually affecting it in the scene. All right, so this is basically gonna be my correct answer. I'll just call it correct text. And then this will just be wrong. And this will be wrong. And that way in the future, I can easily tell which of my, my text boxes here will be the correct answer one. And I'll have this say streak. I'll have my next one say pack. That's kind of what I thought it was. And my next one say, I think a, lions are called pride. So let's toss a pride in there too. Okay, now I have my next section in. And let's repeat that process. So just select those my main objects and put them for this next section as well. And you know, I could do this, you know, several times if I wanted um, you know, to get, you know, multiple different areas or perspectives in here. But um, I'll just keep it to three for today. If you want to have a, you know, highly detailed tiger experience at your, um, you know, your habitat where you have, you know, multiple questions and they, they all maybe raise attention to some of the plights tigers are facing as well, that is, uh, that would be very cool to do. Um, okay, so my final question, let's see. Um, Wow. So I think this is pretty good. Um, I let that's I, that's another fact that I didn't know. Tigers can actually jump more than thirty feet in a single leap, or move up to thirty feet per second. That is, I mean, it's just mind-boggling. So I love that, and I'll use that same uh, same question for my final question. Tiger jump in, how far can a tiger jump at once? And so let's uh, do edit group again. There we go. So my correct text, just for the sake of variety, you know, I'll uh, move that to the bottom and have this be the top. Okay. Um, now I kind of like doing these incremental things. So I'll say, you know, furthest a tiger can jump is three feet. I'll do that. And I'll do 13 feet here, which sounds like a lot. You know, if I was actually taking this quiz, I might, I might actually say 13, um, cause that does sound correct. But you know, 30 feet is the correct one and that'll be uh, changing to green and then having itself glow. All right, so my quiz is made, but I do just want to, you know, just kind of for fun, I'm going to um, show a couple of things when they answer that final question. Or you know what, I'll spend a tiny little bit more time, and if you get all the answers right, 
So I'll toss a variable up here. And I don't want my players to see this, so it doesn't really matter what it looks like. And I'll call this answers, answers. I'll just call it answers variable. Now for each answer that they get right, I'll add one, this variable, object plus one. And I'll do that for my other two quiz questions. So streak and my answers. And I'll use this to detect if they get all the answers right. And only if they get all the answers right, that's when I'll actually kind of show some tigers in the exhibit. Um, that is, you know, obviously the main thing we've been missing so far, but I don't want to just have those tigers just sitting there. I'll show them if they actually get all the answers right. All right, um, now, oh, uh, one thing that I do want to just make sure is um, that my player can't just kind of hop over my, my low walls here. So I'm just going to disable jumping on my player so they can't jump anymore. And um, I could spend a little bit of time. Yeah, I definitely didn't do a very good job uh, organizing my hierarchy. But, um, you know, that is, that's something that's a very good practice to do. But I'm uh, kind of cur uh, curious if I can uh, show my tigers in here. So I'll use, um, instead of trying to, you know, do a 3D model of a tiger or download and uh, import a 3D model of a tiger, I'll just use a uh, picture, use an image of some tigers instead. So I'll do load image and also just because I want to get this done. You know, that would be fun to, you know, kind of do a 3D model of a tiger using these, some of these shapes. But, um, you know, I want to kind of just, uh, you know, get a little bit more realistic kind of picture in there too. So I'm going to use, like I said, that picture for this. And, you know, this is going to be a big tiger. So I want it sitting and kind of resting its paws right there. All right. And this tiger will be chilling on the, ooh, do I even have it swimming? <laughs> that does, doesn't exactly look like it's swimming. So I'll just kind of put this one, uh, like it's laying in the sand, or laying in the snow a little bit. And I'll put my final tiger in my, chilling in my uh, jungle area on the rocks or I'll do it like just like right in front of the rocks there we go okay so let's see um, oh I just need one final thing and that is to check if when this reaches three equals to three then I want my tiger pictures to appear image activate Tiger picture, activate, and then my third one. Uh, there we go. Activate as well. And just so those work, I do actually have to deactivate these. So they're just uh, they're deactivated at start, and that means they won't appear when I start the scene. All right, I think I'm ready to test my tiger habitat slash quiz uh, educational experience here. All right, so how many tigers are actually living in the wild? I think about 4,000. Yes, that looks right. All right, so no tigers yet, that's good, that's good. There's my tiger info poster. Oh, and I can't forget my <laughs> ceilings because those, yeah, I still need to get my ceilings. All right, here's my sex, next, next section. And what is a group of tigers called? Looks like I could fix that piece a little bit. Um, it's called the streak. And for my final section, let's see if I can see that tiger up here. How far? 30 feet. Yes! <laughs> and now my tigers are in here. Woo! There they are. <laughs> That's, I think that looks great. So I'll just toss my ceiling on and then call this one good. Yep, there's my tiger hanging out in my, my jungle. I can even see the other one over there. All right, so let's do, let's just toss those ceilings on there and get, get a sense of what that feels like, um, you know, with that final interior area kind of finished. And I'll just snap those together and make sure it extends across 
the whole way. You know, I don't want uh, a gap in my roof. Make sure I don't have any Z fighting, and then I think we are pretty much done with this. So I'm gonna, well, y'all go inside. Ooh, it's a little dark. Hmm. So I'll do, you know, simplest thing in the world to create some light in a scene. Just throw a cone in there and just use that as a spotlight. So I'll just use uh, aluminum and then just to make sure that this actually does kind of look like a light, we'll use the same size of cone there. Shrink it down just a little. And this one, um, yeah, it doesn't really matter. I can just, you know, grab a paint color, make it kind of look like it's a light. I'll save that paint color too. Oh, uh, that's a little too. And have it glow. Now I can use that same color for a quick spotlight. And this is, um, you know, this is just standard kind of interior design practices. So apply that color to my light, stretch it out and then just drop it right on top. Okay, I'll just duplicate that once or twice so I can have some kind of nice lighting in my, my hallway there. And near the end, and then perhaps once more. Make sure both of those are uh, hanging from the, the ceiling. Oh, looks like my other one went a little too high up. There we go. All right, so let's take that tour one last time. Excellent. And just make sure, yep, so I did not get that right. But fortunately, I'm not penalizing you. You can just kind of keep guessing until you get the right answer. You know, this is just to bring awareness to tigers. Group of tigers is called a streak. Nice. And then 30 feet. Woohoo! All right, cool. So I have my whole tiger habitat experience um, slash educational experience here. I'll close it and save it right now. So if you want to play this on your own time, you can, uh, you know, open this up. You can add, you know, much uh, much larger area for that tiger habitat if you want. Um, but I will. Oh, before I save, you know, I just like getting a nice snapshot in there. So I'll kind of go into my interior. I like that kind of jungle view the tiger looking at you and i also wanted to be pretty clear that i'm in that zoo exhibit perfect so yeah i can kind of see that my tiger's there and that i got you know that zoo exhibit all right let's call this tiger habitat uh eh, we'll call it quiz game you know, just, you know, give a little bit of a, um, you know, fun name to it. I'll add uh, in the description later on, I'll add a link to this live stream so you can go in and actually check out, you know, this, um, you know, how this was made and even go explore the experience yourself. So I'll fill that description in later on and I'll save it and share it with everybody on Blocksmith XR. So you can now check this out publicly. Um, you know, any, that means anybody with an account um, can, uh, you know, download this experience and explore it, go through it. And if you don't have an account, just remember that you can um, sign up for an account at blocksmithxr.com. All you need is just an email to sign up. And yeah, feel free to check out this, this experience. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm very happy you could join me for this live stream. I'll see you all next week for our next, uh, next challenge. And I hope you all stay well and safe. All right.